Tuesday evening, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm, and you know what this video is. It's Weather for Weather Geeks. It's our area's most detailed, geeky, long-form weather video. We do these videos every evening that I work, except sometimes, or oftentimes, we don't do them Friday evenings during high school football season. But other than that, uh, we are like clockwork around here, about 7.30 each evening, uh, a new weather for weather geeks appears in your feeds. And, well, uh, last night uh, the story was not only the cool weather, but if you uh, were out mid to late evening into the overnight, you may have seen the northern lights. Now, we talked about the northern lights quite a bit late last week and into the uh, weekend, but these things are really fickle and hard to predict ahead of time, and we didn't see a whole lot of activity at our latitude uh, during that time frame, but last night we did. Thanks to everyone who chimed in on social media, sent us pictures of some of the uh, lights. Uh, we got several pictures, especially from Trumbull County, including this one from Tim in Warren uh, of the Northern Lights. And don't forget, you can uh, follow me on Instagram, Eric WFMJ. You can submit weather picks anytime via the email address there and also right on the Storm Tracker 21 app. You scroll down and you can submit uh, your pictures that way. It's really, really easy. Now, the geomagnetic activity is winding down, so we're not expecting a rerun of last night tonight. Last night the KP index was up around a seven to even a seven and a half. That's pretty high, and that means you can you can get uh, some aurora uh, you know sightings pretty far to the south. Um, but tonight, tomorrow night, the show's pretty much over, and we're not expecting uh, again a repeat performance around here anytime real soon. In the meantime, uh, it was a beautiful sunset this evening. This is a time lapse from our Boardman camera looking pretty much due west along Route 224 here. Of course, now that we're past the equinox, the sun is setting south of Route 224 just before 7 p.m. and uh, we'll have a clear sky for much of the night tonight. We're going to focus quite a bit on the hurricane in the Gulf because our weather remains pretty quiet here locally. Hurricane warnings, of course, are out for much of the central part of Florida, Tampa and Orlando included. Tropical storm warnings south and north of that. That includes places like Miami and out towards the Keys and even as far north as Jacksonville, Florida. Tropical storm warnings are out. As of the latest advisory before this video was recorded, this was at about 5, 5.30 this afternoon, we had re-strengthening this afternoon. Milton went under uh, some stresses last night, an, an eyewall replacement cycle, which is very common in a mature tropical system where the eyewall it gets replaced and the storm temporarily weakens when that happens. And also there was a little bit of wind shear that impacted the storm last night, so it bumped down a category in terms of the strength, but it's back up to a category five now the pressure briefly last evening dipped under 900 millibars as of the five o'clock advisory 905 millibars maybe some additional strengthening before a more pronounced weakening trend occurs the closer it gets to florida but we're not going to focus much on the weakening trend because this is still going to be a major hurricane and you know I, I mentioned this last evening it's kind of the same idea as katrina back in 2005 which of course was a historic and extremely devastating hurricane in New Orleans in particular. That made landfalls a Category 3, but it was a Category 5 earlier in its life cycle, and all of that water getting pushed towards Florida, uh, that will not change. That fact will not change with any category change in the hurricane. But this probably does make landfall as a strong Category 3. Tomorrow night, round about maybe midnight to 2 a.m., something like that, somewhere in that window, so well after dark tomorrow evening, it will weaken as it crosses the Florida Peninsula, but of course the Florida Peninsula is not very wide. So it's unlikely that Milton will be downgraded to a tropical storm during its trek across Florida, and it probably re-emerges in the Atlantic as a Category 1 hurricane then by Friday morning. But the storm surge is going to be the biggest deal out of this. A lot of rain is coming, quite a bit of wind for coastal areas especially is coming, but the storm surge, all important now. Everywhere where you see purple here, basically from Tampa Bay down pretty close to Fort Myers, or just north of there, um, a double-digit storm surge definitely on the table. The exact point of landfall will be a real important factor when it comes to some population centers. Again, especially around the Tampa area, if the landfall occurs at a spot that's very close to Tampa and pushes all of that water directly into the bay, that is big, big trouble for a very large population center. Our modeling this afternoon is trying to congeal around a landfall closer to Sarasota, which is south of Tampa. That would spare Tampa Bay itself from the worst of the storm surge. It'll still be bad, um, but maybe not as bad as it could be 
if the landfall does indeed occur just to the south instead of right into Tampa Bay. I mentioned last evening it's pretty rare for a landfalling hurricane to occur uh, in this part of Florida. Of course, they get grazed all the time by tropical systems, including Helene just a couple of weeks ago. But a landfalling storm directly into Tampa Bay, uh, you have to go back about 100 years to find a parallel to that. The wind uh, field will expand as this storm encounters the Florida Peninsula. Even though the storm may weaken modestly, the wind field will likely expand. And so a lot of the Florida Peninsula will have at least tropical storm force winds for a time tomorrow night into Thursday. This includes all the way down towards Miami and all the way as far north as almost the Florida Georgia line closer to Jacksonville. Of course the hurricane force winds will be much closer to the center of the circulation but tropical storm force winds 39 miles per hour plus that'll that'll impact a lot of the state of Florida. So here's just a small list of major cities that will be impacted in Florida. Of course, a lot of Ohio and Pennsylvania residents have friends and family in the Sunshine State. Uh, and so here's just a sampling of the impacts on some of these cities. In a place like Miami and Jacksonville on the northern and southern fringes, the impacts will be minor to moderate. But Tampa, St. Pete, certainly Sarasota, uh, extreme if not catastrophic impacts are on the table. Uh, even though, again, we may be looking at a Category 3 instead of a Category 5 at landfall. This is still going to be a really, really big deal. In the meantime, back here at home, not much to show you on Futurecast for the next few days. A couple of disturbances in the northwest flow will give us a few cumulus clouds from time to time. That's about it. And uh, high pressure will just drift around right through the end of the week. Now, our story, aside from the nice weather, will be the possibility of some frost across the area. We had some patchy frost even this morning. Um, in some spots, you know, at my personal weather station at home, I had 35 and a half, 36 degrees at the start of the day today. And some of those colder sheltered locations like where I am, um, it's going to be possible that each of the next three mornings we see temperatures well down into the 30s. You can have frost with an air temperature officially up to 36 or even 37 degrees because we measure air temperature usually several feet above the ground. There can be a big difference in the temperature, you know, at my eye line as opposed to right on the ground um, where it can be of course three or four degrees colder enough for frost uh, to form. A freeze of course is when the air temperature measured is at 32 or below. So just a sampling of uh, what we can expect Friday morning because I suspect that's the coldest morning of the bunch Friday morning. Um, here in Mahoning County 34, 35 will be common. Could someone see a 33, maybe even a 32 in some colder spots? Maybe, just maybe. Same thing up in Trumbull County. Sheltered Valley is a little colder. Over in Mercer County, uh, clear sky will send those temperatures down into the mid-30s. 35, 36 will be pretty common. A 33, 34, not out of the realm of possibility. And same thing down in Columbiana County where the varied terrain will make for some stark differences as you go up and down Route 11, for example. It gets pretty hilly once you're south of Lisbon, especially. Um, and you could see on your car thermometer a change from, oh, 38, 39 down to 33 uh, very quickly if you're making that trip uh, southward in Columbiana County late Thursday night into Friday morning. And then after a brief warm-up Friday afternoon into the weekend, here comes the cold for next week. Now, it's not going to be cold enough to snow, but I think there'll be some lake effect rain showers to contend with at times early next week, and it's really going to feel like November. This is today's 6 to 10 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center showing very good odds of below average temperatures for next week. Real quickly, because we're coming up on nine minutes here, this video is getting pretty long, I want to talk just briefly about the winter forecast, which is coming up in about a month. Uh, we will be looking at a lot of things for the winter forecast, including uh, La Nina coming on in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, one of the key ways in which we make a seasonal forecast is what we call analoging, looking back at past years that bear some resemblance to this year. And since we are heading into a La Nina that's probably weak to maybe moderate, we you know can look at a chart like this and try to find years in which we had a weak to moderate La Nina, a couple years like this, 98, 99, 99, 2000. 20 into 21. Some of these La Ninas, you know, even some of the ones I circled before, like in the late 90s, those were probably stronger La Ninas than we'll have this year. And so, you know, we're going to focus a lot on years that are a little more towards the middle here. Um, 
when it comes to our strength of La Nina, but La Nina is not the only player in town. There's a lot of other factors that go into making a winter forecast, but that's just one of the things that we certainly look at when we start piecing together our thoughts. Uh, I'm just starting that process right now, and again, we're, we're just about a month away, early November, right after Election Day. We're going to do the annual winter forecast. All right, long video tonight. Thanks for sticking with me and watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Tuesday evening. I'll see you back here on Wednesday.